Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luba. My name is Jaga. And today we have an interesting video call with uh, our friend now of Hard Rocket, uh, whose name is Jack. I will tell a little bit of a story, uh, how did it happen, uh, how we met him and uh, who is actually Jack and why we're doing this uh, call with him. So as you know, me and Striker, we're doing uh, coaching calls and we're doing them since we started the Hard Rocket and Striker even started that before that. So the main idea was to give guys the idea of what um, they can expect of dating a Western European un uh, women and um, uh, the flow, where to go, what to do and um, uh, we sometimes uh, cons consult the guys who are planning to come uh, to Ukraine before and now to Europe uh, who are not in a relationship and uh, sometimes we got calls from the guys who are already in a relationship and they just want an advice according to their current uh, dating situation. So Jack was one of them. Jack was the guy who been already in a relationship and he needed our advice. And interesting enough, like we just a uh, minute before this video, we chatted and we discussed that when he called us, um, he met a lady and his kind of like uh, little issue was that he couldn't find the right time to come to Ukraine to meet with her. Um, she was working, she was busy, he has his own business and he has a son that he take uh, care of that, you know, that lives with him and he can't stay home by himself. So well, it was kind of like a struggle of uh, uh, how to how to maintain that, like how to uh, either leave his son and live for himself or like take care of the son mm. until he will be able to live by himself. So this was a struggle and how uh, ironic our life is, is that, you know, no matter what we discussed back then and what was our advice, now his lady is in US with him and uh, she came there by United uh, uh, Ukrainians uh, in USA. Uh, she came by this program and this is the main uh, topic for this video is asking Jack about about his experience with this program, how did he got the documents, uh, what are the main struggles that they went through and coming uh, through right mm -hmm. now uh, and um, basically his experience and also he is uh, helping a lot our current clients who also got a lot of our guys got this uh, status for their ladies and Jack was one of the first who got it and who went through whole uh, procedure and so that's why he been helping and advising with the best advice from the practical point of view so yeah hello jack thank you very hello, much how are you <laughs> very good thank you for joining us uh, i hope that i gave understandable introduction of who you are and uh, what is going on maybe you want also give a... I'll, just, I'll just say here first jack i just want to um uh give kudos and say thank you for the um, for the advice you give in ukraine fusion um it's something that we don't talk about much on uh on our channel here but for you guys we um well i many many years ago built a forum for guys that were a little bit lost trying to figure things out if they wanted to meet women from eastern europe or ukraine specifically at that time um people would go in there and help each other so we don't really talk about it much do we but we probably should but it's we an should. incredible resource and jack has been um also an incredible resource for the guys sharing his experience dating uh, over in um, Ukraine, things good, things bad, um, and giving advice to guys who may be a little bit lost on their journey. So I'll put a link in the description below. It's a completely free form. You do have to sign up, but I don't. I never email anyone. There's no advertising in there. It's completely free. Just go in there, and if you need advice, just ask for advice, and the guys, Jack included, will tell you what's up. So yeah, thank you, uh, Jack, for all your efforts and time you spent in there. Yeah, of course. No and, and we don't. And, and, he, and he's not on the payroll either. He does it because he cares, and I think that's important. Right. To say, so exactly. Very yeah. true. Yeah. So um, yeah, Luber's right. Um, I met my girlfriend, and then we. Uh, I met up with her in Kiev last almost now this week. It'll be a year ago that I went and visited her, and yeah, I did do consulting calls with you just to kind of like see what I should be doing, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? You know, just trying to decide what to do with my business and my son and her lifestyle too, because she had a really long, successful career and two daughters as well who were older. And then in February, it all just went crazy and it went crazy for all of us and for you as well. And, you know, everybody who's probably watching this video and so I helped her and her older daughter get out of Kiev and got them to Finland through another friend where they spent um, time in Finland um, 
and kind of stayed secure and safe. And then during that time, we were trying to decide what to do for each other. Like, well, what do we do? Do we still continue to date each other? Do I come visit you? You know, what was, because we just didn't know. And there really wasn't a real hard plan in Europe also for Ukrainians. I mean, you go to a country and set up residency, but would she be able to travel? Or would she, you know, like we just, everything was so new and so crazy. So then at the end of April, the, um, United for Ukraine visa came out by the US government. And it said that 100,000 Ukrainians can come to the United States on what is called an I-134, an affidavit of support. And what the I-134 is, is that an affidavit of support. So the American citizen will support the person coming here from a foreign country. That means to pay for everything. That means to pay for healthcare, uh, permits, driver's license, you know, food, clothing, anything. And that was kind of the idea so that the person that's, that you are uh, hosting does not have to go on government services. So I called her up and I said, look, you know, do you want to take a crack at this? Like, let's do it. Let's apply. Let's see how it goes. What's the worst? The worst is they say no and we'll go from there. But if they say yes, you know, we'll plan. And she agreed. She was like, okay, let's do it. So I applied like pretty much, I think it was like four or five days after it was available to apply. And then when I applied, I sent them all my financial statements, tax forms, letters that I own a business, you know, besides filling out the stuff, you have to supply uh, the US government with as much financial information as possible on your end to show that you can financially support this person. And so I submitted everything. And within like two days, I was approved, which was shocking because I have done in the way in the past, I did the K-1 visa and it took months to get my approval and then months for their approval. So the fact that it took like two, three days for approval was very shocking. So then I called her up. I said, look, I'm approved. And she got an email from the U.S. government, USCIS, and they said, you know, start an account there. So she set up an account. She answered three questions. I think it was like, is this biographical information true? Are you tested for COVID-19, you know, vaccinated? Are you vaccinated for polio and mumps, measles, and rubella? Why, you know, whatever. So she said yes to all that. And there was another page that said like, just to let you know, like you can't bring any children that aren't your own here, you know, for child trafficking rules and laws. You know, they had like that kind of stuff that yes, I'm over 18. Yes, this all. She said yes, she submitted. And literally within like three hours, she was approved. Wow. Well, and we were just, we were just shocked that within, you know, five days, she had a visa to come to the United States. When did she, like, where, where did she uh, apply for that? In Finland. Ah, in Finland, okay. okay. Yeah, she was in Finland when she did it. So it was just like, well, because the, the other things with the I-1, with this United for Ukraine visa, it specifically states that the, U, the person from Ukraine cannot be in Ukraine. They can't reside there. They had to reside there before February 11th of this year. So after that, Hmm. You had to have left. So if somebody's in you, if there's a woman or a man or whatever in Ukraine now trying to do the United for Ukraine visa, if you put Ukraine there, you're not going to get approved from hmm. what I understand. So they have to be one. in Europe because the idea is to help out Europe to get Ukrainians out of there to get to the United States to help, I guess, ease the burden of, say, Poland. Germany, Spain, on and on. So um, we were shocked, happiness shocked that, you know, this happened. And then she needed a month. So she, to get her things together, to get paperwork ready, you know. So, you know, that was for the month of June that she had to get everything ready, let her family know what's going on. And then the weekend of July 8th, she arrived in the United States and it took her literally through the immigration border like five minutes to get through border patrol. In, but she landed in Newark, New Jersey, which is obviously a main hub for a lot of uh, 
people from other countries to come in. So it made it easier. We heard, I heard about a, uh, somebody who I know, they came in, they flew into Denver. A friend of mine, his family came in through Denver. And when they got there, they didn't even know what the United for Ukraine visa was. Like the Denver immigration, they were confused. So they had to look it up online and they had to be interviewed for over an hour. Whereas my girlfriend took 10 minutes and then she came in and, you know, we had a great time in the city, New York City for the weekend. And then we came back to Pittsburgh and we just started settling in on everything and just, you know, figuring out. Because the first thing they ask you to do is to take the, she had to do the, so we said, we might as well do these shots again anyway. It's not going to hurt her. So we did those shots. So she has the documents just to make sure. And we went online after that and said, yes, she did the tuberculosis test. Yes, she did the MMR test and polio test. And that's it. We've just been um, handling stuff every day. It's been a, she's been here now for over two months and she's adjusting very well in Pittsburgh. So it's been going, going very well, you know? So yeah, so far. And we're just um, going through the processing of her to learn English better through a nonprofit here, through a refugee center here to apply to help with the I-765, which is the work permit. Also, um, but also what happened, I have to say real quick, is that during this time, the U.S. government um, gave Ukrainians now, instead of relying the financial burden completely on American citizens, they're taking some of the burden. So she applied for uh, national health care, which is Medicaid. She can apply for a food stamp card to get food paid for by the government. She can get social security and, you know, which the social security number is, is vital because I can help her open up a bank account that can help her get with her when she wants to get a driver's license. So those sort of things can happen. So we're in that process now. It takes a bit of time, but we're being patient and we're doing it because, you know, in the United States, how many people come in here, you know, legally and illegally, yeah. you know, you have to say there's at least, you know, not just Ukrainians, but there's Syrians, Somalians, now Afghanistan because of the situation in Afghanistan for the past year. I mean, even Mexicans, Canadians, you know, everybody comes in, New Zealanders, you know, everybody comes in. So, you know, the process just takes some time. I also think um, a lot of it too is that, and we found that when we came to Spain, is that it was quite messy, it was quite jumbled up. Not because they're disorganized, but just because it happened so fast and, and they had to do something fast. You know, so yes. system, systems weren't as refined as probably what they would be. They didn't know. expect, they didn't, yeah, they like, didn't there expect was never regulation for that. Because at least like Spain, but I know that every, every country was different. Like uh, Germany was like really difficult because all the documents you need to write down and there is nothing electronic, you need to write these letters and people getting 10 envelopes uh, in Spain. Uh, Spain was always very close for that. So they never actually apply, uh, no, not apply. They never accept anybody except like golden visas, you know, where people spending $5,100 <laughs> Uh, property so they were just sure they didn't know what to do with all these ukrainians yeah. and uh so right. they were open to that but they just literally the process was very very uh, um I, th I think in some sense that may work there may be some benefits to that the fact that it was quite messy and quite loose and they're like okay just like put it through perhaps maybe whereas like sometimes maybe if it were, if there was an actual process there'd be a lot more scrutiny um you know, and looking very closely at things, you know, um, whether or not they should be giving these visas, should they be giving this? I think they just want to help or, um, you know, make sure that everything, nobody is going to have any bad reports. No one's going to go on TripAdvisor and say the United yeah. States government uh, left me out, you know, and put a bad review or something, you know, you know what I mean? Right. So, so they just yeah, want yeah. to keep everyone happy, basically. Yeah. Right. I mean, but it is true, like you just said, it's just the fact that now, you know, our government said, well, we're going to allow this to happen as of this date, 100,000 Ukrainians can show up. So it's like, of course, the government, the workers who are there, civilian workers are probably like, what just happened? You know, and they're just pushing people through, which is mm. fine. But once they the idea is just to get them out of harm's way, to get Ukrainians out of harm's way, to get them to safety to and to help them. Yeah. And that's that's the plan. And the Amer you know, the U.S. government is trying to do that. But it's just now once they get here, it's just the process, you know, and it's just the yeah. process that we all have to kind of be patient about. And Everywhere. that's the one thing I, I always say to myself every day is patience, you know, and it's 
it's been working out. I mean, she's been doing really great here. And, and the transition to the United States has been good for her. Um, it hasn't been that difficult. There's been some hiccups, but just it's the language thing. Like we always talk about what you always say in your videos is the language barrier sometimes. What, you know, tell, us, tell us a little bit about that, Jack, like her language, uh, English language, like how, what level was she at? Does she speak any at all? She does. She actually speaks English very well. So the thing is here for her is she can understand some people, but she can't understand some That's people. It. And it's because of dialect. Yeah. There's different dialects. I mean, when you're talking a city where I live in Pittsburgh, there are many different dialects from all over the United States and Europe and South America, you know, everywhere. So when she meets uh, people from here, there's one, like she can understand me with no problem. She can understand a couple of my friends, no problem, but then there are other friends she can't understand at all because of just the dialect. It takes some time, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We, had a, we had a client recently, or still a client now, and he's- um, Do we have this problem? We have this problem is all the time, like, oh, yeah. And, and it's like, he's from a place with an accent. And um, yeah. I, I had a call him and I said, you have to talk slowly because even though she, that she can speak English, they learn English like this. I want a cup of tea, but, we say right. I want a cup of tea, and it, and, and but but I I wanna, and they don't learn the word wanna. Like who like yeah. not even, it's not even a word. Like you don't you shouldn't even say this. How word. are we all doing? Yeah, I wanna I want a I want a cup of tea, and so they're like, wanna wanna what's you know so yeah yeah it's, I mean there's yeah there's a lot of slang and dialect, and the fact is that there's a different for her. She noticed within the first week or so there's a difference between American English and European English. Definitely, yeah, there's because... a huge difference because. That she noticed, which we laugh about, you know what I mean? There's things that we, you know, we, it doesn't frustrate her. It's just funny to hear for her. You know? But but even so like through cool. different states in America, like you guys have oh, yeah. almost different, almost different languages. You know, you almost miss out yes. parts of words. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, there's definitely a difference between where I live up north, between where I used to live in the south for 11 years and, you know, the south, yeah. and, and the west. Yeah, you know, there's, and northeast, there's just a lot of different dialects, and I try to, you know, explain that to her, and she knows that, you know. So it's been, it's been going well. But like I said, she signed up with Literacy Pittsburgh, which is a nonprofit, and um, we're just waiting for her to be, get start her classes, and then that will happen, you know, hopefully very soon. So, and the other thing too is that you know she wants to learn while she's here, like learn the public transportation system that we have here. She wants to know things around her, so. You know, when she got here, I explained to her too, it's very important that if she feels stressed or some sort of PTSD regarding the war situation, if she wants to go to a park or something that makes her feel comfortable or natural, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's really important, important. I think, um, in our relationship is to try to make her as comfortable as possible. You know, try to be there for her. You don't have to, um, take over i mean in other words emotionally you don't have to like say oh my poor dear are you okay Did, you know if something broke something broke you know what i mean you don't have to like mm. overwatch her so it's just like well you know i can tell she's feeling a little stressed so let's go for a walk let's go in the park you know there's really big parks here let's go ride our bicycles let's go do that oh let's you know you want to go to the mall let's go to the mall you know let's go to you know a store just to feel so she kind of feels something from home yeah you know it's interesting because like we were just speaking about this before just before we started uh, the video it's like there's a lot more to it you know than a lot of guys they say you know like i oh, just have a lot of money and she'll just shut up and she'll be she'll be quiet and she'll enjoy her life with you but there is so much emotional uh and yeah there's, there's there's so many intricate parts that have to be put together you know even the part about the um the uh, culture shock i always thought culture shock was a joke to be honest, I really right. thought I thought I was like, man, I've been to like, I went to Southeast Asia for three months. I loved it. I was eating the food. I what culture shock. But when I came to Ukraine after about uh, maybe like two months, I moved into a place. I my internet wasn't working. Uh, I couldn't taxi. call a taxi. Uh, my card wasn't working. I was stuck in town. I didn't know how to get back to my apartment, and I couldn't speak. To, and it was just like, this sucks. This really <laughs> sucks. And I went back and I said, I said, I think I've just had like this culture shock. Like it's like it's really it's really unsettling, and it makes you really like question: Do you want to be here? You know, it makes you really go. Yeah. Like, and that, and that's what, and so I get it. Like I really get it, and so it's good that you can understand that, and you know, and not just tell her, "Oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Just you'll be okay." Because like it's very unsettling. Like you know, even for a man, it's very unsettling. So for a woman, I think it's going to be even more 
scary, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. As, as you know, we were talking earlier too. The mo- I think one of the important things is that we did meet a couple of times before and we did, yes. we were together before we decided to do the United for Ukraine visa. I think that really helped because we knew each other, we talked to each other every day, video chatted as much as possible, even during this war situation. You know, I mean, we tried always keep in contact with each other. And like I said, the fact that we met before twice really helped because if you're just bringing somebody, like say if you just, you know, you're meeting somebody online and stuff, I feel like it's really important still that you definitely meet before you move things forward together. Yeah, this is, this is a really important thing. You know, we were just speaking before, you know, that we're calling it the white nighting um, of guys saying, hey, you know, I'll take care of a, you know, whether it's a beautiful woman or a family or whatever it is, because, you know, maybe genuinely they want to do something good. Maybe they think that something good will come of it, uh, such as, you know, right. a relationship or something like that. It's maybe it's the easy way. It's the easy path. Um, but, you know, this is something that we've advised a lot of guys to be very, very careful of. The qualification process has not changed. Uh, we would never advise anybody to say, oh, you'd be chatting online. Oh, why don't you, you know, sponsor her and get it to your country? Because, yeah. you know, and, and I'm sure that you can tell us something uh, in a moment about, you know, guys doing that. Maybe out of the generosity of their heart, maybe there were some ulterior motives or whatever, but it doesn't actually work out that well when you go on the white knight, when you jump, jump on the horse to be the white knight. Tell us a little bit about that story you were saying before about... Um, the guy was left holding the bill. Yeah, so what we saw uh, a story online, because we checked the United for Ukraine. Uh, there's like online forums through Facebook and stuff like that. And we look and mm-hmm. um, we saw where there's this one guy, he was trying to be nice. You know, there's posts of people saying like, I really want to come to the United States. Please help me for the United Ukraine visa. Apparently this, apparently this one guy said, oh, you yeah, know, I'll help you and your family. Did the I-134 brought them over, they stayed for about a week, and then they took off. Didn't hear from them, didn't see them, anything. They just took the, the woman and the family, I don't know the exact, but I think it was like, you know, a family, took off and left. Well then, like a month later, he got a bill from the US government for like $2,000 for medical care, food stamp care, providing, um, processing fees, license, you know, like all the fees and stuff, and he was just like, I don't know what to do now, you know, because I'm left on the bag for $2,000 and this is a two year visa. Like this could happen all the time. And Mm -hmm. then as the person that was really trying to help now he's stuck because, well, what to do, you know, where do I go? Because he's probably going to get more bills every month. And then if he doesn't pay them, then he's personally held responsible with the U S government. And that's an organization you really don't want to mess with (laughs) is the U S government. So, You know, I, you know, we advised, I wrote to him and I advised like what he should do is get a lawyer and then write a a letter to uh, the U.S. government requesting that to relinquish what's called a relinquishment letter to to relinquish the I-134, the uh, affidavit support, because then it's official, it looks good, it gets reviewed, it gets approved, he's no longer held accountable for their expenses. So, um... Doing the white knight thing is just, that's just a dangerous, it's a slippery slope. And I agree with what you guys have said. I've been watching your videos for a long time is you have to meet each other. You can talk video chat, talk on the phone all the time. But as we said too, you know, yes, this visa is a faster way to meet, to, to get the woman you love, as I use heavy quotes here, a faster way. But, you know, if you... No, what we said something like, you know, no visa is going, you know, it doesn't matter what the visa is. You still have to meet each other. You should still spend mm. time with each other. You need to communicate with each other. You know, you should follow the standard practices. This is just, you know, yes, it's an easy way, but still your relationship, it's, it still has to take time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, if, if anybody's out there thinking, and I know that there are a lot because I've been seeing what people have been Googling on Google Trends um, when the war happened, when it came to uh, dating. And it was, if there are people out there, if there are guys out there that are thinking, oh, okay, well, this is like the easy way now. And before I was going to have to go there a couple of times and I was going to have to do this and blah, blah, blah. Now I can just fill out this form and I can sponsor her and then we'll fall in love or whatever. Like, 
if 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 you think like if there are guys out there thinking that yeah i just want to fast track it i don't want to mess around and do what jack did or what any of our clients did and go backwards and forwards and i just want to fast track it like you kind of deserve to kind of get like screwed over because instead of like this you're getting scammed in ukraine you basically just got scammed in your own country for for doing something that was absolutely completely and totally ridiculous which was to put your like to be financially responsible uh for a woman that you have absolutely no idea who she is and if right. if you do end up holding the bill you know it's yeah. kind of your own fault on that one yeah <laughs> yeah it kind of is it's it, you know, it has happened, you know, you see that happening to a couple of people over here that it has happened to, like you read the online stories. But overall, you know, like with, with Heart Rocket and stuff, it seems like you're doing the vetting process properly. You know, even before the war, when we were doing the calls together, you know, the consultation calls, it was the, the right channels to do things. You know what I mean? Like it, what you guys do are the right things. You know, you tell the, the guy, like, look, You've got to meet each other. You have to have chemistry. Yeah, it's, it's imperative. It. It, it is so important. Okay, so I have a question also. Uh, since uh, you've got, been so lucky to get the documents pretty fast, at least the first part, I know that you know the rest, as you say, social security number and everything will take much longer. Uh, like you've been helping other guys uh, that... Uh, been clients of uh, Hard Rocket. So, uh, was their experience also smooth, or it was longer? It was faster. How do you how do you feel? Like, what what is the? Um, is there any advices? I would put it this way. Is there any advices that you would say to the guys who are planning to do that to get it faster? This is the right question. Yeah, I mean, as far as the United for Ukraine visa itself, there's the said online that they're going to max it out to 100,000 Ukrainians to come here. As of last a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, it was apparently it was up to 95,000. Now, whether or not that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what we read and heard. Mm -hmm. I would tell your guys to still apply for the United for Ukraine visa. That's, I think, still a definite. If they want to be with the woman, she wants to be with them, they've met, everything's okay. I would say definitely first still go through the United for Ukraine visa. Um, because if it's, say it closes, you still have to file the I-134 for the K-1 visa. Yeah. So you might as well just, you know, do it so you might as well do it and see what happens. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as the other men that I've helped, the process was pretty easy like mine. It did take them, some of them a couple of days, some of them it took a week. The biggest problem for some of the men was just, some of it was language barrier. Some of it was the people, the women they were talking to didn't not, they didn't really know. They, everything was in English on the U.S. government website. Yeah. So they do understand English, but the fact is they have to read all this stuff. Yeah. And, they, yeah. and they don't understand some of the language that the U.S. government is putting out there. So you have to like go step by step with them. One thing I did that helped and that uh, a couple of the other guys did is when they were fought, when they were, signing up on the uh, US government website is to do a video call with them at the same time to do a video chat or phone call and go over the step by step process with them. Yeah, that's right. So they're not doing it incorrectly because most of the women are afraid they're going to do it wrong. Yeah, of course. And it's going to get rejected and then they're going to feel terrible because it's their fault. And you know, and it's not, you know, it's just the way our government is. So mm. I helped out a lot of the men with the women to help with the processing. It did take some time. And then what we did, we do still talk to each other. I still talk to the men that I've helped, um, usually on a weekly basis. It's just the main thing is that everybody has to be patient. That's the biggest thing is to be patient because everything will happen. You will get approved. They will come here. You know, like you just have to plan it. And, you know, it's just you have to take time every day out of your life to do this. You know, you have to take at least a half hour to an hour to do this stuff, to do the processing and the emails. And it's worth it. It's completely worth it if you love yeah. each other and want to be together, yeah. you know? Yeah, I agree. If, like, if, I, if someone is thinking it's, know, it's, um, it's too much uh, work to do that, well, then they shouldn't have started the process in the beginning. No. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I knew going into this, this is what it was going to be. You know, like I knew I had, I had to call the Allegheny Board of Health to schedule a tuberculosis test. I had to call three times. We had to go to the welfare office to get an EBT card four times because they kept breaking, the machines kept breaking down. You know what I mean? 
and you do it because you want them to be happy. You want this, yeah. this to be successful and they want to, and you want them to see that you can take control of this and you can handle yeah, it definitely. instead of just saying, forget it. We're not going to do it. You know, exactly. you don't want to do that. Exactly. Men yeah. solve problems. That's yeah. what we do. We fix shit, you know. Jack, right. thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, helping our guys, first of all, and uh, helping for all the information. You know, I know that any time, like usually, uh, you know, you respond to me it's so fast and uh, you always um, in touch with us. That is great. We really, really appreciate for all your support as well. And uh, we wish you and your lady and your family good luck. And we always there for you also if you need thank anything. You. And we hope that soon you will get all the documents and everybody will be happy and settled. And all of us, maybe one day, will get rid of culture shock that I'm actually, unfortunately, also going through. And very unhappy <laughs> about Spain. Uh, yeah. here in Spain. Very unhappy about. Uh, also ready to give up uh, almost every day. But um, we are... We should be strong uh, together. We should be strong and supportive to each other. And I think that this is our biggest superpower. Is to yes, love definitely. And to yes, support. and if any of your guys want and have any questions or they need any help, you, they can reach out to you to reach out to me. You know, you, what we've been doing for a while now. You yeah. know, give them my information. I have no problem helping any of you guys out. We to appreciate achieve it. Achieve this. That's yes, cool, man. No problem. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. We thank you. It. So. Uh, hopefully that information was helpful for you guys. I mean, Jack's been very useful for our clients, other guys as well. As I mentioned before, uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can go to Ukraine Fusion and it's totally anonymous um, and it's completely free. And there's a ton of guys, heaps of guys that will help uh, you out in any aspect of whatever it is that you're doing when it comes to dating overseas in Ukraine. Um, so yeah, so check that out. And um, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, for this video one here. thing that I want to say that, you know, I'm really impressed how the hard work could grow in a different directions. Like when we started, like we thought that it will be like one kind of thing. We wrote the course, mm. then we started doing the tours, then we started like having, like it's all about matchmaking, it's all about making people happy, it's all about matching people, but that we will also have this like community such as like Ukraine Fusion and like uh, when Jack is like uh, connecting uh, some of our yeah. guys, like we all know about each other, they know each other, they like finding each other visiting each other they're driving to each other they become friends in us the ladies can communicate because mm. like this is very important even though there's a lot of ukrainians uh ukrainian ladies at the moment in us but they still want somebody who went through the similar experience so what is actually happening like with hard work at the moment it's something like really magical uh even though like we're going through a very tough times in ukraine but in general the whole um the whole process and community that we're building is very powerful and thank you for all of you who are watching Watching, who's supporting who are using our service and if you feel that you want to discuss your current relationship or you're looking for a lady from uh, the western U europe you're welcome to call western us western europe eastern europe eastern europe i said twice western europe by the way yes eastern europe eastern europe sorry <laughs> we see you guys in the next one <laughs> see you i later. need some coffee